Hello, I'm Shabano Vilgrami, and I'm going to read a short passage from my book, Those Children. On my very first visit to my mamu's house, a pale green two-story in the congested heart of an older subdivision of Karachi, famous for its sweet sheer mom, as well as for the Imam Barga at its center, I was immediately captivated by a massive portrait in black and white on the wall directly opposite the entrance. It depicted an older man with thinning shoulder-length hair casually sitting on a bench surrounded by trees in a park or a garden. His kurta sleeves were rolled up to his elbows, one pajama leg slung across the other, his sockless feet in oxfords. He was smiling through his eyes, not his lips, his entire face a study in suppressed merriment. Mischievous, a friend of tricksters and frauds, he looked as if he had just hoodwinked a pair of little boys into trading their chocolate for a bowl of bitter gourd. I decided immediately that I liked him and assumed that ours was a relationship not only of kindred spirits but also of blood. This man must be my nan, I decided, long before we had been formally introduced. Our trip to this part of the city to visit our mother's side of the family was secretly arranged by Shabazz Chacha, who had proven himself a consistent ally, notwithstanding a few incidents, which I eventually put down to lapses in good judgment and forgave. We set off that Sunday morning on a tour of the old city, which Shabazz Chacha persuaded Dada was necessary for our full integration into Karachi life, although we had already spent six months in the city and had seen a fair part of it. Miraculously, no one objected, and Baba, when told, briefly looked up from his newspaper, it was last week's, to nod his head, wishing us a safe drive, but showing no desire to participate. And so there we were, the three of us girls in the back, the windows pulled down and our hair flying, while Shabazz Chacha and Reza in front yelled over the wind and the amplified traffic sounds and spoke of the city as it was now and how it once was when our father's family first moved here. I listened intently, craning my neck forward so that I was, for all intents and purposes, sitting between them, first looking up at one, then the other, until Fatma, worried for my safety as we mounted a huge speed breaker, pulled me back and held me down. I was intrigued. Like us who had migrated from one large metropolis to another, the Mamuds had made their own migratory journey from the northern Indian province of Uttar Pradesh to the southern seaport of Karachi, where they had settled after the partition. Before I could ask, Shabazz Chacha explained that the partition referred to the division of India and Pakistan in 1947 by the British, who once ruled over them. Dada, whom I had always imagined as a giant oak, his roots buried deep and wide beneath the foundations of C-44, so fixed and rigid was he in his routine, had grown up in an entirely different place, a village no less, with a population of a few thousand people. For a couple of minutes I mulled over this, paying no attention to Shabazz Chacha's description of the busy thoroughfare we were slowly making our way down, the heart of the business district, its tall buildings rising above the pollution and touching the blue cloudless sky. It was no less a surprise to me, after countless geography classes and coloring my way through outlined maps, that countries like people were not stable entities, that they were made and broken, then made again.